very much for giving me this opportunity to speak with you. No I'm I, happy, I'm happy about this. <laughs> I've heard so much about you. Xavier has told me so much about you. So I can't wait yeah. to um, get into it. You're a ghost on social media. I can't find yeah. you. I've tried <laughs> to do some homework. I've only got what Xavier mm. spoke to me about you. But I want you, in your own words, to let the viewers know who you are in relation to boxing um, and where you yeah. are so far in your boxing career. Okay. Yeah, so um, I started boxing when I was like, um, when I was like 13. Mm-hmm. started boxing, like, I just, I was just brought in because I was having trouble on, you know, the streets and stuff and mm-hmm. uh, into a bit of violence. So I started boxing, went through like the amateurs a bit, but um, we, we always knew my style wasn't for amateur boxing. I wasn't taught like that. It was more, you know, classy, more slower, like professional stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm just kind of giving a quick summary. I know we'll get into it yeah, deeper, but yeah. yeah, so, yeah. So, um, was in amateurs for a while, and, you know, yeah. and all of that stuff. And then decided to turn pro not too long ago. But then I had um, a knee injury. I told him I had a tear in my ACL, um, cartilage damage. He said I got arthritis there as well. So that kind of slowed things down. So, um, yeah, I turned pro and I've just been waiting to make my pro debut and, you know, just make noise. So that's yeah. where I am at now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's Shaquille Johnson under IQ Boxing, head coach yeah. Xavier Miller. I take it you're also mm-hmm. trained when you're in the gym by Nicholas Prempe and all of those involved at IQ yeah. Boxing. So we're going to go back to the beginning. Yeah. You said 13 mm-hmm. years old. You went into yeah. the gym. You started boxing. How did that come about mm-hmm. at such a young age to say, you know what, I'm going to get in boxing? Yeah, um, you know, it was one of my neighbours they, like, as I said, I was always getting in trouble and I was good in school and stuff. I was like, you know, polite, I'm cool, but it's just, I had a bad temper, like very violent. Anything, if I was in trouble, I had to do with like violence or fighting or something. So my neighbor said to me, you know what, I'm going to take you to a boxing gym. And me, I've always known fighting. I didn't think about boxing or let me do martial arts or anything. So, mm. you know, I respected my neighbor. So I just said, all right, cool, we'll go. So he brought me to um, the boxing gym local to me. It was um, Stonebridge Boxing Club. Okay. And he, so I was, yeah, so I was there. I was there for a while and yeah. I liked it. I was training. Yeah. I was, um, you know, learning new things, learning discipline. But then I stopped for some reason. I don't know why. I can't really remember, but I stopped and mm. I kind of started going back to what I was doing before. and. You know, I just forgot about boxing. Mm -hmm. And then somehow I think something motivated me to go back. And when I went back, that's when I met Nick and Zab. And then that's when, like, the whole boxer really came out in me. Mm -hmm. And it was just, yeah, they changed me, especially Zab. Like, he, he saw something that I guess nobody else saw. Because at the time, he wasn't, like, um, head coach there. Like, they had different, um, coaches and like different classes right but when he was there the things he would tell me the time like he took on me you know he would say things to because originally I'm southpaw I'm left-handed but yeah. and you know one day he was like nah go orthodox and the other um coach was like nah nah you shouldn't be doing that um it doesn't make sense but Zab like you know he stuck with it and he knew what he was talking about because I can I'm so comfortable orthodox and it just changed me and I can switch back and forth now. So it's just like, okay. yeah, he saw so many things that, you know, I didn't see, even, my, even me, myself, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, that's when it really started for me and when I really started taking it serious around, yeah, 13, 14. So you said that you fell out of love with boxing, you stopped going. 
when you first went to Stonebridge. Yeah. How do you find that like mindset to say, you know what? How do you drag yourself? Like you said, you went back into what you was into before and then you found mm. yourself back in the gym. How do you then like drag yourself and say, you know what? I've really got to give this boxing a try. Because let's face mm. it, if you didn't go back then, you probably wouldn't have mm. met Nick and Zav. And then yeah, we probably we wouldn't be having this conversation now. So talk to yeah. me about like having to pull yourself to say, you know what? I've got to change what I'm doing. I've got to get mm. back in that gym and really start to take this seriously. Yeah. I mean, I think it was, I've always, you know, not to toot my own horn, I would say I'm kind of smart. Like, I'm able to know when something's right and when something's okay. wrong. And I knew that, okay, this, what I'm doing, like, how long can I do this for? How far is it going to get me? Also, I think around that time, um, I started going to church as well because I just needed, like, a change and, you know, I just needed something different. So that helped me a lot as well and yeah. that just kind of put me on the right path and you know that's a big part of who I am now my faith and so when I went um back yeah. and I met Zav like I said that even boosted me even more like you know this guy he's seen something in me and he's taking his time like on me he's not making me <laughs> you know he's determined yeah. to bring the best out of me and that that meant something to me you know like this guy that just don't know me from nowhere is taking his time on me, he's helping me, mm. giving me equipment because I had nothing. I, really, like, I weren't a boxer, I didn't okay. really know about anything. So time, you know, the effort, and it's just, yeah, that, that meant a lot to me. Loyalty is something that's a lot to me even now. So that kind of just uh, um, made me like, you know, I can't let this guy down. Oh, okay. kind of pushed me and helped me change my mindset and then I fell back in love with the sport again you know started watching more started being around it more then you know you gain friends brothers at the gym so yep yeah it's family is it? that family mentality mm -hmm. and I think you get kind of like Definitely. attached to that and you like that so Definitely. you keep going back yeah 100% yeah. I, I totally agree with that so when you yeah. went in there and you said you initially because you're left-handed the tradition is, they will say. Yeah. <laughs> so talk to me about mm -hmm. your star, how you started off, and what Zav saw in you to say, all right, then we're gonna we're gonna see how you work with Orthodox, because not many cultures yeah. will do that. So talk to me yeah. about that. I know this uh, Zav's a genius. I don't know <laughs> what it was, but he just knew and it worked. Like when he started, kind of just took me under his wing, and you know. Because when I went in the gym, I I could fight, you know. I, okay. That's what I was doing. I, yeah, I love to fight. I remember just randomly, you know, people before boxing, like just challenging people to fight just because I just want to fight, you know. Like, that's what I loved it. So I could always fight, but I couldn't defend myself. And, you know, um, boxing and street fight is two different things. 100%. So that was something, yeah, that was something I had to work on and when Zav took me like we worked on I'm, I'll never forget this I remember he put me in the ring yeah. and there was three girls and he made them alternate just like alternate just punching me and I couldn't I couldn't obviously punch back I just had to defend and my neck was just getting popped back popped back and I was so upset because it's like you can't hit them uh, back. yeah I can't I can't hit them back but obviously he's teaching me that you know it's more than just throwing punches yeah you know, it's there's so much so yeah when dealing with that stuff at the time obviously it wasn't great because I was upset but I understood mm -hmm. like this guy you know he's he's serious so yeah he um the day he told me to switch from Southport to Orthodox you know the other coach was like nah because as you said you know it's tradition if you're left-handed you box Southport mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then he was I remember it clearly. He was just making me, you know, throw jabs, move around, throw jabs, move around. And I felt comfortable. It was weird because I haven't... Okay. Like, before that, yeah, I didn't really box orthodox. So, but I was comfortable and he saw it and we developed it. And yeah, it's just... Now I can go back to South Hall. Mm. Now I can, you know, go orthodox. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it was good. And so... Once we kind of, you know, sharpen up on the defense and stuff, 
yeah. my style was, you know, keep it long, jab. Like, okay. I love my jab. It's my favourite favorite yeah. punch, you know. Like, you know, there's so much different variations and stuff. So I just love throwing that out there even now. But so that's when I started, that was it mainly. So I yeah. just developed from that. Mm-hmm. See, I like that because it's like, okay, you've, you've said it there. You're a fighter. You can fight, mm-hmm. but you want to box. Yeah. So you have to learn mm-hmm. how to box. So yeah. I'm going to make the presumption, and please correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. in your style of fights, because we'll come on to that in a bit. But I just want to touch on it now. Would you say you're more yeah. of a, a aggressive, come forward fighter in your style? Um, I would say yeah, and but in a in a smart way. Like I'm not the type okay. to just wait. I feel like sometimes you know people are just standing there and just waiting too long. Obviously, I understand yeah. the boxing game and it's not rushing in, but yeah. I am come forward, but in a smart way. If that makes yeah. sense, like that's why I know um we'll probably discuss it, but the and. I feel like a lot of it is um, throw unnecessary punches to look busy sometimes and I didn't like that style and that's not me but I will come forward but I will more pick my shots you know if I see you open I'll throw I'm throwing and you know trying to hit you I'm not hoping to hit you I feel like amateurs you know you okay. throw six and you just okay. hold two land so yeah, yeah that's hmm. so then that going from thing. that kind of style then and you said obviously about Zav getting the people in the ring to hit you and mm. it's about learning about defense. So being somebody mm. that's used to that fight, fighting style, uh, cause you can scrap, you've said that, that's what got you yeah. into, involved in the sport in the first place. How do you then yeah. become someone that works on defense and then possibly deals with like counters rather than mm-hmm. come forward, come forward. You're looking at defense and, and countering yeah. what's coming at you. How did you develop that? Um, like I think it just happened kind of over time. Like Zav put in so much time with me, it's yeah. it's crazy. He's so much time, and I always, you know, respect him and love him for that mm-hmm. because he didn't really have to. There's so much people in the club, but he saw something that you know I myself didn't even know, and yeah. we realized that my footwork somehow I had good I had good feet. So you know, a lot of people, some people are more. Um, like their upper body, their trunk movement, yeah. they can slip. Yeah. Yeah. So me, I'm more like feet in and out, you know. I could, I got the head movement there, but I had good feet. So good feet so turning directions pivoting yeah so we just worked on that and yeah it just it got more comfortable to me you know when you start doing something and you see like you can understand it so you spend more time working with working on it and then we just got there over time and then Mm. started working so we just kept it yeah it's all about still realizing that you're like a student in the game and you're still Mm -hmm. learning so the feet then Mm -hmm. So that's something that came natural to you. Because yeah, everyone's I don't just know got good from. feet. Yeah. And you can <laughs> see that even in the pros that we see. Mm-hmm. Not every boxer mm-hmm. can dance around that ring. And like you said, you can hit your pivot out the way, or you may throw the one, two, three, and on the third, the hook, you're pivoting out the way to make a yeah. miss, then come back with maybe a backhand or whatever. It's not something mm-hmm. that yeah. everyone gets. So talk to yeah, me about true, that true. natural feet development. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know where it came from, honestly. I remember Zab saying to me, you've got good feet. I was just like, I don't, I don't know, you know. But yeah, so I just, once hearing that and, you know, actually saying, okay, yeah, I like moving in and out, being on my toes. But then you just kept that, you know, skipping drills and stuff. And okay. Footwork drills and just a whole bunch of stuff. And my thing is, um, I like being relaxed, especially in the ring, you know, like no, no tension. It's just, so that's just allows me to just, you know, dance around, skip around, yeah, just <laughs> move, move myself and, you know, be free. So, yeah, we just um, worked on it and it just, yeah, it just came naturally, just came out more and more mm. and stuff, especially, you know, when I was lighter. I'm a bit more heavier now, but it's still there. Yeah. It's still, yeah. <laughs> I can still do it. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. so that loose and heavy style. So you said you started studying and watching boxers. Which type mm-hmm. of boxers, which boxers were you watching? So my main was uh, Tommy Hearn, you know. <laughs> That's the main, love the guy. So I was watching him and, you know, the the jab, but not just the jab, the way he snapped it, the main move, you know, the the ring control, the dominant Dance, all of that. He? So it's just, yeah. He was yeah. on his toes, he was light, wasn't he? That, that mm-hmm. one, two, move, one, two, move. He's just, yeah. and it was just, it it's was just, almost like he was, there was, it was effortless, but it was powerful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what, that's the main thing I tried to take, like yeah. that right there, the how it's like, how it was so effortless, but it was effective. So that's what I was studying him. And you know, like you, it's things inside of boxing, like you know, holding the middle and ring control and stuff. And okay. That, that's the things that kind of, you know, excite me because we you know boxing is, it is, you know, very mental, but still sometimes mm-hmm. people jump in the ring and it's just going to throw punches. So, I like the mental aspect of the game, you know, okay. just like looking looking in my opponent's eyes, like, okay, if I move my hand here, let me see what he does, you know, hey. like more of that stuff. So, yeah, I just, you know, study, study. I would watch boxing, but it was more like, okay, let me put this on and then bring it back. What did you do with his feet there? You know, so hands was the main person, but I really liked watching anything boxing involved because I feel like you could take little things from, you know, another person I love is Arturo Getty. Okay. Love, love Getty. Okay. <laughs> love yeah. Getty. So, uh, yeah, I know a lot of people remember him for what Mayweather did to him and stuff. Yeah. And obviously the trilogy with Ward. Trilogy. But he, yeah. <laughs> he, his movement, some of the stuff he would do. Yeah. It was just, you know, obviously we're different in size and stuff, but I definitely took stuff from him and implemented it and so yeah those two I would say is not my favorites but definitely up there the first two I'll yeah. always mention yeah. when I speak about boxing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. so how long did it take for you to turn um from someone that's going to the gym to turn over to say okay amateur yeah um so what I liked as well about Zab he didn't rush me I feel like like he trained me, we trained all the time, but he waited till I was ready. And you know, boxers will always say they're ready. You know, they want to fight. You know, that's the ego <laughs> talking, though, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> all boxers have it. So mm-hmm. I would, I probably thought I was ready, you know, before I was. But that okay. kept me. We worked, we worked. Us spars, experienced guys, older guys, yep. heavier guys. Because, you know, coach knew, he knew what I was capable of and yeah. stuff. So I, I got some beatings. I won't lie about that. But it was it was part of the game, you know. It was the, it was the experience that yeah. helped me, you know. So, mm-hmm. yeah, after a while, I... Um, so we said, oh, I wasn't going to have a fight and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then we booked my first fight I can't remember where it was but we went out all my family came my mom and everything my brother nice. and then my guy didn't turn up the guy was supposed to fight he didn't turn up so I was oh. like oh I didn't get to fight yeah <laughs> yeah I was I was it was weird because I wasn't upset but I was 
you know, more my family can came waste their time, but I still got to see like my teammates fight and stuff. So I was just like, you know, all right, cool. We go back and we we go again. So um my first actual fight yeah. was in Horsham, which is just so far. So we go down there now, not as much like my mum and stuff wasn't there, but my brother and like other good friends were there down and it was just like wow this is really happening it was it was crazy for me you know the venue was nice it was kind of dark with like you know lights coming down it was just mm-hmm. like wow this is really happening Great. so the fight before mine yeah the fight before mine um one of my teammates was fighting so i watched two rounds and then i went to get ready yeah and stuff so i'm coming out and i'm hearing you know the cheering from my people and stuff and, that. Yep. and then i look across the ring and this guy that I was fighting, oh, he was, he was kind of short and so stocky, and I was like, oh my gosh, like you know, size size wasn't really a thing for me, but looking at him, it was like, yeah. wow. And I think after I spoke to him, he told me, you know, he was, um, I think he just came from the arm. <laughs> and stuff. It was like, wow. So when I see, yeah, so <laughs> when I saw him, I was like, wow. And I was just very, to put it in perspective. Just, like, okay. just to put it in perspective, how tall are you? I'm like, um, okay, Nick was a bit generous with 6'3", but I'm like, so 6'4", so but t- I look longer. Yeah. Yeah, I look kind of long, my legs are long, my arms are yeah. long, so. Yeah, so yeah. to just put it into perspective, you're looking looking into the ring and you're seeing the short, stucky, mm-hmm. you described as yeah. just coming out of the army kind of guy. Sorry, carry on. I just want to put the height yeah. into perspective. <laughs> no, no worries, no worries. Yeah, and you just had tattoos all over and stuff, and it's just like, Okay, this is, you know, I mean, I, I think I was, I think I was 18 at the time. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going in the range now. And before, coach was saying, like, you know, are you nervous? And it's, it's just like, it's it's good to be nervous, you know? Yeah. It makes you human. Human. So, like, it's good, like, use that nervous energy. Okay. So, I, so when, so the bell rings and, you know, I go straight away to what I know, the jab. Keep him out there, throwing the jab, throwing yep. the jab. And he's coming forward, you know, as they do, he's rushing the forward. Pressure. So I'm kind of like, yeah. you know, all right, jab. yeah, pressure. So I'm just, as I said, like the feet going back. I think yeah. this year, Coach um, uploaded this fight on YouTube. So, yeah, it's there. So, yeah, I'm going back. I think he catches me, catches me with a shot. I wasn't hurt. But because of the pressure, I kind of stumble and then I just go into what I know, fight mode. But like, all in all, I won that fight. But it was like that feeling of, you know, raising my hand at the end, the whole, like people okay. cheering, like Shaq this. It was like, yeah, I need to do this again. Like, I love this. This, it was great. So that was my first fight. And yeah. So yeah. the nervous energy then? How do you, convert, like, nervous energy, first fight, you know, going in there, looking at this opponent, thinking, okay, this is something different. How do you turn that ne- uh, nervous energy to help you perform good? And this, I think this is a personal question for me because it's something I've always yeah. thought, you know, and say, yeah, it's good to be nervous. You know, you, you can use that. How? <laughs> T- tell me yeah. how you use it. I don't know. <laughs> so... For me, I feel like um, so there's a couple of things that obviously I always like, you know, pray. This is me to, you know, get the nerves down and just, you know, okay. that's my faith and just yeah. stuff. And then there's also, I know what I've been doing with the work I've been putting in okay. stuff. I know what I've been doing. Yeah. So there's that belief in yourself. And also it's good. The nervous energy is good because it keeps you sharp, you know, All right. sometimes. Yeah. yeah, it keeps you sharp. Sometimes you go in there kind of not clueless, but it's, you can go in saying, you know, I'm going to win. It's obviously everybody goes into win, but yeah. you also got to be cautious and see the danger and not just think, all right, this is going to be easy because it's boxing. Really, yeah. anything can happen. Yeah. So, yeah, that with, that's me personally anyway. So the nervous energy always kept me sharp and, you know, just kept me okay. on my toes. And then, but once, once I'm in there, it kind of goes once that first bell rings it's just yeah. that all right it's time you know yeah. it's showtime let's go yeah and it's just me and that person 
And the thing is, because I already come from a place where I love fighting, anyway, I love, like, you know, yeah. testing myself. I love, let's go. So, so the confrontation yeah. part's never going to be an issue for you because you're nah, fighting. Nah. Um, mm -hmm. It was just like, I was thinking it. sometimes when you think of nervous energy, you think of someone being tense. You can see in some mm -hmm. fighters, sometimes you can see them when they get tired, the shoulders go up yeah. because they're really concentrating on, I've got to get these shots in, but you can see the, the tenseness. And I think sometimes that happens yeah. with nervous fighters as well. So it was mm -hmm. just your take on how you convert that like nervous energy into like, okay, yeah. this is what we're going to do. And it seems like you say certain things to relax yourself. You get that game plan yeah, in no, your head definitely. and it's like, let, let's focus on the yeah. task at hand yeah definitely I'm I always try to be relaxed so you know okay. some people I always say okay do what works for you like you know but mm -hmm. me personally I know some people like to like fight days or fight nights like keep themselves away and stuff so now I like to be around the band I like to talk you know just be like normal yeah as I would say normal. and then when it's my time I go and do business and then I come back because I don't like to do anything out of the ordinary because that's not authentic. Once I start faking something here, it's just not going to work for me. So yeah. I like to do everything normal, then yeah. go in the ring. That should go normal too, which is, you know, dominate. So yeah. That's it. And my second fight was in Bognor Regis, which is my personal favorite fight. I threw so much right hands in that fight. I don't know. It was just, <laughs> it was kind of unordinary for me but I just kept catching him with them and it was I just loved it so yeah my second fight again another um short um kind of stuffy guy kind of tried to do the same thing but after the first fight I was more comfortable yeah this was like you know it was a nice show where people was in like you know suits and ties and stuff and it was this like this all at the time was shocking to me because it's like I haven't been around this so I'm seeing this I'm like okay I'm putting on a show for these people I gotta put on a show so um yeah so that fight started he started rushing and as I said footwork yeah. you know, moving in the mouth yeah. jabs right hand to the so that was my second fight and even after that fight their coach came in and he asked them like how much fight did you say like I had because it's like he didn't <laughs> believe that was my only second. That was, you yeah. know, the second. So mm -hmm. that was like a boost of confidence. Like, yeah, so I must have performed well. And then, yeah, it was, I won my first four fights. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. happens after that? So my fifth fight, um, where was this? Let me try to think. I can't remember where it was, but it was far. <laughs> it was very it was it was very far and it was it was Miami, know, was this it? one everyone no, no, no. <laughs> 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 nah, it was a very <laughs> but this one was different it felt the day felt weird for some reason and that's not um even an excuse because I, I still think I could have uh, won this fight but it was weird we was there for a little for a while I yeah mean, Things were kind of unfamiliar, but you know me, coach, and Nick, that was the team. So I think I was the only one fighting that night, I think. Okay. And so I'm fighting this guy, but somehow I'm hearing, I don't know if someone came and told us, but it was like, you know, this guy's record, it doesn't, it doesn't match like him, basically. They were saying he's been in the gym for ages, so he's very experienced, this guy I'm about to fight. I'm like, all right, no, cool. And it was a good fight. Yeah. It was a good fight. I, I can't really um, remember it. I don't think I've done anything much different. I think this was the first time someone was kind of taller than me on my height. Right. But it was, it was a good fight. Yep. And me personally, I think, you know, I won. Maybe that's just the boxing in me. But I think I won. And, you know, even when... Um, the ring announcer looked at the card, you know, kind of looked like this doesn't make sense. And in my boxing book, it said I won, but they announced I lost. So it's like, all right, cool. You know, <laughs> we'll take it <laughs> as amateur boxing. Yeah, I was like, all right, you know, we'll take it. So that was the first loss. And it was, I wouldn't say it was difficult, but it was like, okay, first blemish on the record, you know, mm -hmm. Mayweather kind of 
you know, everybody, the mirror of effect, you know, everybody kind of wants that, <laughs> that zero now. So I was like, all right, you know, we get back in the gym, that's yeah. fine. Because I didn't get, I didn't get like beat up. I didn't, I didn't yeah. feel like I'd done anything too wrong, but it's just go back, go back and yeah, start again. Yeah. And just, they want to change their whole fighting style yeah. and their game plan. And yeah. Nah, so yeah, I tried not to make it affect me like that. And yeah, coach is very supportive, and you know, coach is very honest. If I'm doing crap, the coach would don't. He would have told you. Know, he's, yeah, he's he's just more. He's more like I say, he's more than the coach. Like that's like mm. a father, really a father thing for me. So we're very close. So he doesn't, you know, pull punches. He mm. he lets me know. So yeah, we just spoke about everything and just bounce yeah. back really yeah mm-hmm. and you mentioned that Mayweather effect because even in mm-hmm. amateurs it's there mm-hmm. no one wants mm-hmm. to lose their all mm-hmm. yeah so a young fighter mm-hmm. winning all of his fights a, a mm-hmm. questionable loss where mm-hmm. even the people that are, that are there their home turf are thinking hold on what's going on here you yeah. said it didn't knock your confidence but initially, mm-hmm. when you think, okay, yeah, I've I done this. Mm-hmm. And then they pull up the hand of the other person. How does that make mm-hmm. you feel as a, as a boxer? No, because that was the first time it was kind of like yeah. unknown territory. It's like, oh, yeah. okay, what do I do? Like, wow, I lost this one, you yeah. know. And then we got that long drive home because as I said, Ooh. it was far. So, oh <laughs> man! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was a, a three-hour drive took took six days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> exactly that. It was it was so yeah. much, but yeah. I mean, as I said, we spoke about it. We kind of you know laughed and all right, you know what happens. Yeah, and yeah. It kind of but I went through what what went wrong or what yeah. we could have done, but it's not too much. Mm. Of beating yourself up, you know, beating yourself up. Oh, yeah. let me change this or this or. Yeah. So it's alright. Okay, maybe if I just did. And as a, like coach, we studied everything. Like every moment of the day, I said this guy's doing something with boxing. So like you know, we got the video. I made sure I always bought my videos um of the fights. So we just studied it, went through it, yep. and you know, yeah, back and forth. So yeah, that's why the confidence was kind of like because I know. I know what works. I know, obviously, every fight is different. Everybody I fight is yeah. going to be different and you have to adapt. But to completely change my style wouldn't make sense or to completely say, okay, now this is wrong, doesn't make sense. And I know sometimes people go at their coaches and think, oh, no. I was going to that. Yeah. I, <laughs> nah. I, I knew that that wasn't, the, that wasn't the case, you know. I, because I've definitely been, mm, Gave me everything I needed, and sometimes it just doesn't, just doesn't go your way. Yeah. Even after the questionable decision, it's just like if I dwell on that, it's not gonna help. Yeah. And this is kind of where, like, you know, my faith and my belief comes in. It's kind of just knowing who you are, where you want to go, what you're doing, kind of thing. It's just all right. That's the path. Yeah. And even with my win, I try not to dwell on those too much because if you stay in that moment, it kind of doesn't help you for your next one. There you go, because if you keep on mm-hmm. having that winning mindset, spot on, and this is what I'm saying, mm-hmm. that, that mentality there will take you places, because if you're yeah. getting used to, one for a better word, getting gassed up by wins, mm-hmm. everyone's like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How hard is it then for you to take an L? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's, it can be, well, we, we've seen what's happened with certain professional fighters after losses. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to mention Deontay Wilder on here, but we've seen how <laughs> people take <laughs> losses. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's yeah. like it's psychologically, when you've been mm. told you're the champ, you're the best person, uh, nobody can't beat you, and then you get mm. fair enough. Yours was a a ropey decision. Yeah, that, like to get like a really bad loss is like yeah. you just can't deal with it. So it's mm-hmm. good that you've got that mindset. And that's what I wanted to come on about the relationship that you have with your mm-hmm. trainer. And in times when you, you know, you do get the L or I call them lessons. I don't call them losses. Yeah. I call them more lessons. 
that does that solidify the relationship with the trainer and if you're going to look at it from an outside perspective how can a loss then contribute towards animosity between the fighter and the trainer because surely you must have seen it along your on your career path yeah I mean, heard about yeah it. yeah <laughs> no definitely i me personally i consider that loyalty is a lot for me so where coach brought me from yeah and even outside of boxing like he's done so much and it's it's different when you know someone cares it's not I'm just not just yeah. um I'm just not another number or something yeah. and it's not just me like coach cares about his fighters he doesn't just throw them out you know and let them get hurt mm-hmm. and stuff and I know of boxing games and boxing coaches it's just yeah. like okay we'll train you and then you're going out and cattle market it's not yeah it's not safe it's not so I know anything that coach tells me it's not just to you know boost my ego or anything he will tell me okay if I did this wrong or if I done this and we you know we've so much work like sparring and stuff and so yeah. the relationship is relationships tight nothing can really you know make me kind of even going up in the pro ranks like I know it's it's weird because me personally there's a um, there's a pro boxer now and you know he just he just lost and he didn't take it well and, you know, a lot of people are saying he needs to fire his coach, he needs to fire his coach. And me, I was even saying maybe he needs, you know, to get rid of his coach. But then I thought nobody could ever tell me <laughs> about that. Like I, so I understand, like, where loyalty is more because, you know, where is that taking me from? And, you know, I won't just start losing. And, yeah. you know, God forbid if I lose my, like, 10 fights straight. Zav's not going anywhere because he's not the problem. I know that a lot of people from outside noise would say that, but nah, the relationship's tight, and I think that's the that's the thing. Sometimes a lot of you know um, a lot of coaches and boxers relationships, even as they start moving up the ranks, it kind of goes to more business side of things. Yeah, and I know, yeah, no matter where I go, I know Zav. The care is there first, you know. He. Yeah. He's always talking about me, helping me. Even aside from boxing, he's always there. So I'm, mm. I'm thankful. I'm so grateful that you know it's not just yeah. business and the kids. So my relationship, yeah, I, I know it's unfortunate that not every boxer and you know every person can have good relationships with coaches and you know find coaches that care. But you know, I, I wish that you know more coaches will be more. Honest, more caring and understand, yeah, and honest, yeah. Honest. <laughs> That's the truth. Mm-hmm. I think, like, when you have that honest bond, like, say, for example, your sibling, you know, the relationship mm-hmm. you have with your sibling, they'll say to yeah. you, That was rubbish, you mm-hmm. need to do this, you know. And it's about having yeah. that kind of relationship because you can have a relationship with your coach where they're so close to you that they feel as if telling you anything constructive will be deemed as um, like a nasty comment. And this is where the ego is coming, isn't it? And it's like having that honest relationship for your coach to say, you know what, Shikar, you did this, you could have done that, blah, blah, blah. And you say, Mm -hmm. yeah, you know what, okay, back to the drawing board. About having that Mm -hmm. kind of relationship with your coach. I think that's important and we don't speak about it enough. Mm, nah, definitely I think yeah sometimes you know the coaches don't want to say things and to because maybe they don't want to lose the boxer they don't want the boxer to go to another club and stuff but nah that's not right even Nick you know Nick can be like Shaq you know like Shaq <laughs> you kind of I don't know what you're doing I I mean there's been times where I've been upset like I've been sparring or something mm-hmm. and coach would be telling me do, do something or you know, instruction, and I just can't get it, I just yeah. don't understand, but I know he's telling me this for a reason, and, you know, he'll be going at me, <laughs> there was one time, I think I was fighting soon, and I came to the club, and I was a bit overweight, so I said, coach said, go for a run, so I ran, come yeah. back, tired, and yeah. then, 
went on the scales. Nope, go back for a run. Serious? Like, oh my god! Then I came back <laughs> again. Go back for another run, and then I came back, and then still had to do the training sessions. And it's just wow. like, you know, obviously it, it's hard. It's like, oh my dear, this is much. But you know, he's not doing it just for laughs. And some a lot of boxers can't handle that. It'll be like, now nah, this guy's taking the myth or this guy's. But that's when you don't have. The trust that's when you don't trust the coach or and discipline you know, or and discipline and discipline because i should first of all i shouldn't have been overweight so it there takes, you go it personal takes, responsibility mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so <laughs> it's a lot definitely you have to have the mindset you know for boxing because it's not just you know probably being in the ring as hard as it is that yeah. might be one of the easiest parts because there's the dieting there's the training there's the mental thing it's yeah. It's a lot. So. And how many more amateur fights did you have before you said, okay, it's time to, well, you and your team, Zab yourself and Nick says, okay, it's time to go pro? Yeah, I think I've, I think in total, I only had like maybe 10 or 11. I think I won like um, seven or three or something. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, all some of the decisions were questionable because I didn't fight in that amateur style so sometimes you know and it's happened to a lot of boxers in um, my club because even I'm, I heard Yusuf say it. Yusuf yeah we, yeah we don't really that amateur let me throw a thousand punches and land five kind of thing it's messy it's yeah with you know I mean that's not us and me especially so I like to you know keep it on box I could, you know, get in scraps because sometimes they're needed, you know, your inside, you need to work a bit yeah. and stuff. But sometimes it just looks like, you know, you're being pressured. Like if I'm boxing on the back floor and someone's coming forward and I'm picking them off, I'm moving, it's still sometimes to the judges will be like, oh, okay, the other guy's controlling. But if he's not landing, if he's not doing anything and he's getting hit, like then how like as Yusuf said you know he's on the ropes he's comfortable he's landed the better shots and stuff but sometimes it goes against you so yeah just going through all of that and just was that yeah we don't think we need to Mm -hmm. even though 10 fights is it doesn't seem that much but I don't need to do you have the like 300 like Romanchenko yeah you can learn but I mean I've sparred so much and been around so much and the study and so and sometimes you just have to learn as you go so yeah. coach knows and I know that so much so much has been like you know placed in me yeah um, sorry I've been around you know for a while so it's we just felt like yeah it's time time to go now time to go. so then what happened you end up getting injured yeah talk to I mean, so is that at the cost of you turning pro is there a fight line dot talk to me about that yeah so I um so we was talking about going pro and stuff and my knees were really I've always kind of had problems with my knees but I didn't know you know where it was so like okay I just fight through the pain box through it and I advise I advise against this now I tell everyone if you feel anything deal with it fast okay you know, because yeah it can it can you know be harmful later on so yeah um I think I I turned I had a few MRIs at first they didn't um, see anything and then you know coach said go for more you know don't like don't just leave it you know you have to be strong with these people because they'll just tell you nothing yep. so then after they saw that I had like you know cartilage damage like a okay. tear in my ACL which was weird because I was still moving but the pain was getting worse and then so I had surgery I think I turned pro yeah I turned pro yep. and then got all the results and things and then had surgery and then after the surgery, I felt like, because I had surgery on my right knee, but I got a bad left knee as well. And I probably need surgery on that one. I think what might have happened, I may have come back too early. I didn't think it was too early because it was nearly a year, but I just wanted to get back into the training, start yeah. doing my stuff. But I feel like the surgery kind of made things worse. Mm-hmm. So from when I had the surgery to now, I think it's been like two, maybe nearly three years because yeah, I didn't get to have any pro fights at all because my um, my knee was just that bad. I couldn't if I started training, it would I would have to stop. Mm-hmm. Going back to strengthening it, going yeah. back to you know starting again, going from the 
time from the drawing board. I've obviously put on weight, so I need to get that down. But I'm just taking, trying to take it slow. It's been annoying. It has been annoying. But that's where kind of the mindset yeah. sometimes comes in and yeah. faith and stuff to keep me going. Because I'm so happy, like, for my, for my brothers like you, Steph, and the rest, and Adrian, everyone that's, you know, doing their thing. Kay, you know, just so much. Everyone, like, in the gym like, that I see is doing their thing but at the same time it's hard to watch because like yeah. I want to be there with you guys it's like your I friends going there. out to play and you got to stay inside <laughs> and look out the window and it exactly horrible yeah, feeling yeah exactly so I'm I'm so happy with everything they're doing and you know like I'm glad because they're talented they're talented and but it's just I want to and you know I love them because they're always motivating me and saying you know Shaq when you're coming back and that so that's all oh, my brothers forever but it's yeah, it's mm. been a long time. It's been a long time since I've been able to. But but we're going back. We're going yeah. back. You know. Okay. But I feel honestly, I feel like um, I started making excuses for myself, which could happen. Habits. Like, yeah. Like, uh, you know what? This is close. Uh, can't do this. Or you know what? You're me. Blah, 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 blah. It's kind of. And what made me. Um, kind of wake up and snap out of it. I saw one of my school friends that I haven't seen in years. Yeah. And he used to play football. And he was asking me, like, anybody that knows me knows, like, two things. Like, church, like, he went to church and he started boxing. So they always ask me one or two or both, like, how's yeah. church or how's boxing? Or yeah. So it was like, how's um, boxing? I was like, oh, you know, I tore, um, yeah, I tore my ACL and cartilage his damage and da-da-da. And it was like, so? You're walking. <laughs> I was like, I was like, wow. I was like, <laughs> I was like oh, wow, you know? Oh, well, if you like, put it that you know, way. <laughs> yeah. It was like, you know, most people like give me the sympathy and it's like, oh, da, da, da. but he played football, so he kind of understands and he knows it's serious. So yeah. when he said that to me, it's like, you know what? That was kind of a wake up call. It's like, you're kind of making excuses for yourself now. You can get, like, I love boxing. I always watch it. Even my two years year old like he loves it now because I'm mm. always watching it with him so I've always the mindset yeah I'm going back to boxing but I wasn't really doing much so now I'm super motivated I'm glad I can have conversations like this because it just motivates me even more so yeah the work the strengthening and that that's where I'm going to start with the legs and then yeah hopefully it just it'll fall, back, it it'll fall right. back into place mm. it's good that you yeah. saw that school friend that's a good friend I know. I know. That's a good friend that just told you straight. Yeah, I haven't seen him for years, and then I saw him, and he's mm. like, "Yeah, he just let me have it." And that's that's what I love, like you know, mm. that's that's what I need. That's what I need. I need. Yeah. So the road back then. What mm. are your plans? Um. So first, it starts with you know the um, the training, the strengthening my knees, my legs, because that's where I feel like. I've been up for long, yes, but there's certain things you don't forget. I mean, there's, I still, you know, walking around the house, shadow boxing, movement. I might, you know, I'm more heavier, but still the jab. I kind of just, there's things that are still in me. And once you get in the ring, muscle memory, you know, you 100%. might be sore and stuff, but you'll remember. 100%. You'll remember things. So I would start with the strengthening. I, I'm sorry, like, yeah, the... This is where, like, you know, faith and my belief comes in again because it's like mm -hmm. I could have, you know, the Bible says the season for everything. So I could have had, like, my pro debut and stuff, but kind of more doors are open now. You know, coaches kind of ascended and, yeah. you know, he's like with Dylan White and kind of more things. So, yeah, I'm I'm excited. Um, I'll still be around, like, when I start training again, I'll be around, like, good mm -hmm. company, like, Yusuf and Kay and everyone, like, Adrian, like, everyone that's, Kind of doing their thing and in the gym so it'll kind of help me elevate me and I just take it slow and I know as you said it'll fall into place this positive positive thinking yeah I'm a strong believer in everything for a reason and nothing before mm -hmm. it's time mm -hmm. um, yeah. and you can have prosperity from adversity mm -hmm. That's true. if you keep <laughs> you know if you keep that mindset um mm -hmm you'll get back to where you need to be. Might not be where you want to be, but you'll get back to where you need to be. Um, if you want to do boxing and, you know, you, you've, you're pro, you know, you're yeah. 
how can I put it? You're living the dream of a lot of amateurs that mm. can't train because they're not classed as elite. So they have to, yeah. they have to force themselves to go on that run. They have to mm. force themselves to do all those hundred sit-ups because they can't train at a gym. Mm. They're relying on a coach that may be coaching pros or is trying to make money another way. So they're relying on that person to get them the messages. But you're in a very privileged position. You got to make the most of that privileged position because the, I know a million, well, I know quite a few amateur boxers that would love to yeah. be where you are right now. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. That's, the, that's another wake up call, it's true. You know, it's sometimes it's getting complacent and kind yeah. of, as I said like before, you know, making excuses and stuff, but I definitely- Nah, you've got an injury, it's not an excuse. Mm -hmm. What would you say 2022 then? Because we've got to work out, you've got to rehabilitate, you know, this yeah. year's got to be for rehabilitation and strength. Yeah. So 2022, what would you like to be doing at that point in relation to boxing, of course? Yeah, I just, I just want to, you know, be, just, just want to be in the ring first of all. I really fight, you know, I fight anyone. I don't really, I don't really mind. I believe in myself and what I can do. Obviously, I'm looking what's out there. I can see, and I never take anyone lightly. But also, if you start um, looking at other people too much, you forget about what you can. Oh. Is there anything that you want to, I don't know, is there anything else that you want to talk about? You think that I've missed something that you want to say um, before we conclude our conversation? Um, no, I think we covered most. I'd love to do this again, though. Just speaking, and you know, I, this, is, this is great. It brought back memories as well. So yeah. I'll definitely, like, maybe in a few months, like an update or something oh, when I start training. So, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to do this again. But yeah, I just, um, I'm going to try to be more active on the social media. I know I said I was a ghost because that's my personality. I'm kind of away from it all. I just like, I'll get it. I'll get companies. it. Yeah. I like, but you know, in this business we're in, we kind of got to be, you know, out there. people got to see us, I guess. So yeah, I'm going to be doing more. I'm going to start training more and stuff. So I just, people just, you know, look out for me, look out for the name. I know it's hard with stuff like this, you know, boxing especially. People want to see action. They hear, Absolutely. Oh, this guy's good, this guy's yeah. that. But they don't see, I'm they don't know, do they? Yeah, so, nah, I'm, I can deliver. I think I can deliver, you know, especially with someone like Coach behind me. Because Coach is, he, even when I don't, you know, believe in myself, he's definitely helped me with that and, because all these guys, like I said, my brothers, they're doing that nice that you need to come back. Da, da, da. Yeah. Sometimes they'll be talking about the jab and I'll be like, my jab? Like, I don't, but you know, people see differently, I guess. Mm. People see, see sometimes, you know, we can be too hard on ourselves, you know. So I believe, I believe in coach and everything, what he says, also Nick, like, you know, good people, good people around me. I'm, I'm grateful, I'm so grateful. Yeah. So, yeah, everyone just stay tuned, and, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No time, I'll be back in no time. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. It's nice to speak to somebody else from, you know, the IQ boxing camp. Um, yeah. I've been privileged to speak to all of you. I'm truly grateful. And we've definitely, definitely got to do it again. October Red on YouTube. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And don't forget, at October Red, we stay ready. CLK ready.